In this video on Programming Basics, we introduce you to the basic mathematical, Boolean and logical operators. So let's start with common arithmetic and comparison operators. The arithmetic logic unit, or ALU, performs arithmetic operations, logical comparisons and binary shifts. And it's one of the core components of the CPU. So let's look at the arithmetic operation side. The simplest operator is addition or plus. So here x equals 7 plus 2 would be 9. Next we have minus. So x becomes equal to 7 minus 2 would be 5 subtraction. Next we have multiplication. So x equals 7 times 2 would be 14. Next we have division. So x equals 7 divided by 2 would equal 3.5. Next we have explanation. So 7 to the power of 2 would be 49. Next we have modulus. Now this one's worth talking about a second. So what is x equals 7 mod 2? So it's how many whole numbers are left over once you fit the number on the right into the number on the left as many times as you can. So the number on the right is 2. We can fit that into the number on the left three whole times and what we have left over is 1. So 7 mod 2 is 1. Next we have div for integer division. Now this is how many whole times does the number on the right fit into the number on the left. So as we just said, the number 2 fits into the number 7 three whole times. So 7 div 2 is 3. Next we have round. So that rounds numbers to one decimal place or to a number of decimal places you specify. So in our example, x equals round 2.667,1 rounds the number up to 2.7. And finally we have trunk, which is short for truncation. This simply chops the number off at the number of decimal places. It doesn't do rounding. So x equals trunk 2.667,1 truncates it to 2.6. Let's now look at one of the other main parts of the arithmetic logic unit, and that's doing logical comparisons. So first we have the double equals, so that means equals to, so 7 double equals 7. Then we have not equals 2. This is commonly the explanation mark followed by equals, so 7 is not equals to 5. We have less than, 5 is less than 7. Less than or equals to, greater than, and greater than or equals to. Now note, different languages may use different symbols to represent these operators. For example, not equals to can in one language be the explanation mark for all and equals, can be a less than or greater than symbol. There are various different formats. Finally, let's look at the basic Boolean operators. First of all, we have not. So think of this using the example, we use an umbrella if it's raining, but not cold. We can say end of file equals false, while not end of file. We have the AND Boolean operator. So think of this like wear a coat if it's raining and it's cold, while not end of file and not found. We have the OR operator. Catch a bus if it's raining or it's cold. So if x equals 2 or x equals 4, while choice is less than 1 or choice is less than 3. These are three basic Boolean operators you're going to come up against again and again and again in computer science and programming. There's one other fundamental Boolean operation you need to be aware of, and that's XOR. 
And this is a slightly different version of or. So make sure you understand the subtle difference between the two. So here's our or operator. If it's raining or cold, then wear a coat. So if we look at our diagram at the bottom, we're saying if it's raining, wear a coat. If it's cold, wear a coat. If it's raining and cold, I still want to wear a coat. Any of those situations, it's only if it's not raining and also it's not cold that I don't wear a coat. XOR, however, is what we call an exclusive OR. So we only reply true to an XOR if one or the other is true, not if both. So a great example here is to think of as buzzing in on a quiz game. If two game show contestants press a buzzer, it's only the first that should win. So if contestant one buzzes in and contestant two doesn't, then contestant one wins. If contestant two buzzes in and contestant one doesn't, then contestant two wins. But if contestant one and two buzz in, we don't want them both to win. It's only the first one to buzz in that should win. So these Boolean operators are used in Boolean expressions, and these are present in selection and iteration statements. Boolean expressions always equate to either true or false. So in programming, we see things like if this Boolean expression is true, then run this code. While this Boolean expression is true, run the code in this loop. Do the following code until this Boolean expression becomes false. Now you have an overview of the various operators you need to know about, let's have a look at them actually being used in a language, in this case, Python. So here we've got six divided by three, and we can see our Python output window down the bottom, and that gives us 2.0. Six times two gives us 12. Two exponentiation four is 16. Three plus three gives us six. 10 minus five gives us five. Seven divided by two gives us three. Now note, this is doing integer division, not standard division. And in different languages, this may be represented with a different symbol. Now we have seven modulus two, that's giving us one. And then Python modulus is represented by the percent symbol. And then we can see obviously how we can compound or join together different arithmetic operators by using brackets, just like you do normally in maths. Let's look at some comparison operators. So here in the right hand corner, we have a little table. A is going to equal five, B is five and C is 10. So if we say print A equals B and A equals C, we get true and we get false because A and B are the same but A and C aren't. Similarly, if we flip that and say A not equal to B and A not equal to C, we get false and true. B is greater than A is false, whereas C is greater than A is true. B is greater or equals to A is true, and C is greater or equals to A is also true. B is less than A is false, whereas B is less than C is true. B is less than or equals to A is true, and B is less than or equals to C is true. We can, of course, combine the various different operators we've been looking at. So here we're combining comparison operators with Boolean operators. So A is equal to B. Well, we know that bit is true because A is 5 and B is 5. The second part there says C is greater than B. Well, C is 10 and B is five. So that bit's true. So what we've got here is two trues. We then use the AND operator, true and true. One AND operator needs both parts to be true for the result to be true. So true and true is true. The second one though comes out as false. Because A is equal to B, that bit's true. But C is less than A, that is false. So what we have now 
is true and false. Well, true and false has to be false because with an and symbol, both halves have to be true for the result to be true. See if you can work out what the results of these other ones will be before you move on in the video. So these next two, the first one should be true and the second one should be false. And then not A equals B should be false. Not reverses the result of A equals B. So although A equals B is true, not true equals false. And the last one, if we work it through logically, is false. Because A equals B is true. C is greater than B. Well, C is. That's true. So we have true and true, which is now true. And then finally, we say not true, which reverses it and makes it false. Now, again, as we've said in previous videos, there are different symbols used to represent the various arithmetic comparison and Boolean operators, depending on the language that you are learning. But the underlying concepts are the same and you need to be aware of everything shown in the left hand column in your exam. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the common arithmetic, comparison and Boolean operators used in procedural programming? Thank you.